Thank you guys for tuning in for another interview with King Solomon Entertainment and um, Hollywood Now, and, uh, another interview, wonderful, wonderful guest today. Uh, we would thank our sponsors. We could not do what we do without our sponsors and our partners. We want to thank heart to heart for youorg Hill to Hill, um, USC Black Alumni Association, the Moreland Greenwood Foundation, as well as um, Dr. Marlon Hester Pioneer Credit. If you're looking to get your credit restored, as well as to find out the importance of credit, please reach out to Dr. Marlon Hester Sr. Let him know you heard about it on the King Solomon Entertainment platform, as well as our other sponsors. Let them know you heard about it here, and they'll give you the King Solomon discount. Thank you guys so much. And if you yourself interested in partnering with us and sponsoring with us, please reach out to King Solomon Entertainment TV, and we'll let you know how to connect and do just that. We also want to thank all of our submissions for the King Solomon monologue. If you are an actor, please submit your 60-second uh, monologue uh, uh, to King Simon Entertainment TV as well. And we're going to be putting you before a star panelist of Hollywood Insider to give you constructive criticism on your talent. So please submit that because it's a deadline coming up. We want to also thank everyone who has commented, subscribed, and also who has uh, pretty much been following us and spreading uh, the wonderful um, content that we're trying to get out here on King Simon Entertainment. So please, if you have not subscribed, please share this video and subscribe. Uh, we are on all platforms as Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter, as well as YouTube, James Clayton Interviews, everywhere else, King Solomon Entertainment Company. And if you want to uh, help us directly, we are on Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, and Zell, King Simon Entertainment. And we want to get started with another Hollywood Now wonderful interview. We have producer, artist, songwriter, Kevin McCall. So we thank him so much for being here. Um, you know his songs. I have a song from Deuces to Strip. Um, one of my favorites. No, I can't curse. No BS. One of my absolute favorites, as well as so many others. Uh, even for Carrie Hilson as well. He wrote a song for. And we just want to thank him so much for doing this platform. Uh, please introduce yourself, Mr. Kevin McCall. Go ahead, sir. How you doing, everybody? It's Kevin McCall. Hey, Mac. For my work in the past. First of all, I just want to say it's a pleasure to be a to fellowship amongst great people. Um, and your platform is great. I've been, I'm a fan of it myself. So thank you. So thank you. I'm here. Thank you. Thank, I you. thank you so much. So let's get into it. So, how did it all start? Where did you know you wanted to do entertainment? Uh, you was an artist. Where did it all start for you? You got to take it all the way back to my grandmother. It all started with my grandmother. Funny because um, a lot of the greats that I look up to, they were raised in a Jehovah's Witness mm. home. My grandmother was a Jehovah's Witness. And I know Michael Jackson was raised like that. So I found that interesting uh, because my family is very musical, very talented. And uh, all my uncles and my aunts, were saying, you know, they ended up teaching my in a group called Bloodstone. And I know you know Bloodstone. They sang a song. Take to the sky on the natural yeah. to Got to okay. pay for the, do a little sample, but wow. that was my, 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 my blood uncle. That's that's who Ray, they, I actually knew him before my father. Wow. I didn't know my father until I was like six or so. So my first male that was ever in my life, he taught me. Wow, wow. And, Our, and so you so you are a uh, Los Angeles native uh for the in the Watts area. And I always ask the LA natives because who grew up right here in Hollywood and how it influenced you differently. Like what was that like? Was it always something even before you, your family was already in it, it was in your blood? But what was it like as far as the culture growing up here in LA? Did you always like because it's so accessible here, did you always get influenced by it from day one as long as you can remember? It's so many. That's 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 a great question. One of the things I want to go back to my grandmother. I feel like people in L.A., other artists and other people in entertainment, they have to take a plane to get to yeah. Hollywood, and we just have to take a plane. So I think that's a that's that's a blessing. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like my grandmother, if you take it back to her, she's from Utah. 
-hmm. So for her to do make the pilgrimage from Utah to Los Angeles, she already did half the battle for me. Cause imagine me having to grow up in Utah and, and put up with CB, right, or something, right. you know, I know. Or, yeah. So I feel like, you know, just, just standing on the shoulders of the giants, you know, the people who came before me, my mom and my dad, my dad is from Compton and my mother is who's from the, she hates when you say Watts, cause it's not Watts, it's South Los Angeles. South Los Angeles. Used to live in a project, so that's why yeah. she like. And I yeah. always, you know, I grew up being a Tyrese. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom moved outside of that neighborhood, a better neighborhood. First, it was Hawthorne. Then I had to move back into the neighborhood with Tyrese. Was I love that because I grew up watching talent shows and stuff. And then he was yeah. a Coca Cola commercial, and this is a kid coming out of the Watts area. Yeah. I'm visiting there from Hawthorne and then sometimes there, my lady. So I started watching as I got older, watch claim. But really, okay. I'm not necessarily watch. I have family members living in the Nixon Project right now. Family members live in uh, Jordan Down. It's, yeah. You know anything about LA? That's uh, cousin. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> two gang watch that have the biggest beef. But that's also might be a, a design of God because if I have family members in both of this, I see what he was trying to, you know, he was trying to bring peace amongst in a place that's that's got so much talent. It's a gumbo, a melting pot. People don't know watch it be a jazz capital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much culture, so much culture, and the fact that you have family, it gives you access. Because all you gotta say, I'm big bow cousin. You know, you 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 good. You know, <laughs> so. that's huge, man. And I think that's what really gave me start in this yeah even yeah. when even when i went astray right i want to talk about that i want to talk about god so like i don't know if you remember it was a time when rp dudes act like gangbangers mm. that much you had like right. ray, ray you, yeah you he from carson which is another place where i grew up shout out to yeah. ray yeah i remember a time where we was the you know chivalry they said chivalry was there so we was trying to prove that wrong we was trying to prove that you know, it's guys out here who will cry on you, keep wet, you know? Yeah, and I feel yeah. straight for that, straight, uh, straight from that. I don't know what the cause would be. I honestly think it's, um, it was, it was programmed. You know, they were programming us. We, you got to think, singers before us, we didn't grow up on Tupac. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bobby Brown didn't grow up on Tupac. If he did, he probably would have had tattoos and all. You know, so when you see someone like, you know, the only person I could think of is CB, you see a person like that, yeah, he's influenced by rappers as well. So then you come into the era of music where the streets is kind of getting intertwined with the music. So me being a dude that came from the city, but set apart from it, I was a street dude, but I never been a, uh, uh, wasn't street savvy or nothing. I just right, was right. from so then when I got into Hollywood, and you still had the the, the lingerings of, you know, the Suge Knight mentality type people, people who were going in there with the gang, Bogart and stuff. You still had remnants of that. And I was like, how do I do this? I'm, I'm not a gangbanger, but I don't know what to yeah. do, but I'm not a punk. So I was like, well, let me tap back in with the streets. Like people like, maybe I need to just be seen more and I need to give guys more opportunities to transfer their they talents or, you know, they. The thing is, it's bad getting them in trouble into something good. Be my security. And I could yeah. never get to work out right. You want to know why? Because I'm not a street dude and I didn't really know how to treat the, the street mentality and how they think. I have a better understanding now. That's why I stay away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But in that time in the music, I had started trying to fix something. And it almost, we'll get into that later, though. Wow. So it's so take us take us now to your big break. What was your big break in the industry? I would say my big break would have to be I used to say I say the story different every time because you get a better understanding. I feel like my fraternity had a lot to do with my success. And my fraternity that I was a part of was Omega Star Five. Okay. And I say was because I have different so I feel with the brotherhood, but I'm not active because okay. of my but I believe in brotherhood and I don't believe that I should just 
you know, throw away all the relationships I feel. But I actually yeah. rock with all frat, all okay. I rock with black, talk wealthy to me. So um, I think when I did songs with my frat, I was traveling and stuff with that. Starting on the same still today, some people um, who join on my Friday, they that song that I learned that I put on YouTube. Mm. And like from those YouTube that people will start seeing. People wasn't even in front. Right. One of my daughters, uh, my oldest daughter, her favorite song by me is called Tell Me Why. It's, it's a play we sing and it just gets you through tough nights, tough times. Wow. And it's like a Negro spiritual. And that's what I, I like from my friend. I learned all that boldness. Like a lot of people thought I was a gangbanger, but they don't know what I was really tapping into was that you dog that you look, you ain't going to take nothing from me. You ain't going to punk at my woman. People would try to punk at my child's mom and stuff. And I started getting bad in the industry for fighting and stuff. But I was really tapping into being able to protect myself, being militant like the black panthers and like my fraternity i give a lot of big ups to make us our five because the whole process they told me i could get through anything um i thought the hardest thing i ever went through was a rape case in college my mm. sophomore year and if that wouldn't have went you know that wouldn't have turned out in my favor i wouldn't have been able to play i wouldn't have been able to play football or graduate Praise God, me and her came to the conclusion and we worked it out. But I thought that was the worst. Like, now, did you, did, now, with college ball, did you have admiration to go pro? I did until after that incident. Ah. So after the, the rape incident happened, coaches wasn't playing for a while. Gotcha. But praise God, I got a coach. And I'm going to tell you something people don't know. You ain't going to believe me. This is crazy. I did not understand the concept. I don't like sports, right? I like to play. I like just like kids like to go play. On, I like that. I like to watch sports and keep up with sports. The final four. I don't. I don't care. So I kind of in football until my last year in college, Washington State. I got a football scholarship, full ride, everything. Wow. And I didn't even understand what I was doing. I was just going off natural ability and just hoping I was doing stuff right. I knew the I knew common sense run that way, you know, but other than that, I didn't get the game of it, okay. you know. I think that me explaining that just explains a lot about my emotional I learned some things late, you know. Uh, but I did want to play, but I didn't really play football, you know. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's interesting how that, that incident, um, being able to really – it reminded me of the industry a lot, right? Yeah. It was like, because of that, the rumor, they wouldn't have taught me to do what I could do. So I felt like they stopped my ability to get to the NFL and ranked as high as I could and have the stats, the stats that I could have had. Yeah. But yeah, you know what's yeah. crazy about that? If you know anything about my father, Kevin Paul Sink, he was my head football coach my whole life, from six years old all the way to high school. Wow. We had six running backs at my high school, and we were all good. My dad purposely wouldn't start me in football games. No matter what coaches were in there, different colleges, USC, Oregon. Like, oh, if I don't get these stats, what's going to happen? He yeah. would purposely not play to the second half. Mm. So people wouldn't say there's favoritism. Mm. And he also was teaching out of different diversity. And instead of being the only guy out there, he got a scholarship. Mm. So my dad taught me how to deal with the person. I don't know how, but I just thank you, Dad, for teaching me that. It helped me get stuff because I would have wanted to just kick myself if I put all my eggs into football and then they took that. So when they took football from me, the music is going to work. And I'm going to everybody regret, you know, the years that, the, you know, time period when they thought I did it and then after everyone said I you still wouldn't have let me do college to, you know. Yeah. So. You no, know, it's wonderful how you're able to, especially in sportsmanship and um, the athletic arena, you able to transfer those skills to other areas of your life because it's all centered around discipline. And so if you can really push through it, persevere through that type of 
uh, regimen and adversity, you can just transfer it into the other challenges of other industries. So I really think that was a great foundation um, to you going into the music industry and you being a multifaceted artist, you production, um, singing, songwriting, as well as producing. I mean, to even like, how do you even stay focused doing so many things and doing it well? You know what I'm saying? So that's that's a, a really testament of that type of uh, perseverance, tenacity you you learned as a kid. And so, how do you focus? Like, how do you transition from being a producer, being an artist, and being a songwriter? How is that transition works for you? I think the last time that I exhibited a, a great deal of focus was, you know, my last project I put out, I believe it was definite, something like that. And after I had Marley, I, I wasn't too focused to really understand how to get ideas out of my head and in the process, kind of like I have, you know, vision boards and stuff all around. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, I had someone show me that if you write the vision and make it plain, it'll make it a lot easier. So this Absolutely. is something that I'm implementing in my life. And it's probably the reason that this um, interview was able to happen. I wasn't in my own way, like my own blessing. I'm trying, you know. So I, I wasn't organized at any point in my career. This is my first time ever being organized. I used to have a manager and uh, God, I love him. I'm one of my dogs, God bless CJ, but he worked full time writing. So in my whole career, we never really got we never really got to see the best of me, you know? And I, I like that because it was learning because now I want to manage. Yeah, I have no, I, I, no, that's, I, that is so, that is like a universal message because I'm telling you, uh, I, I learned that lesson myself because it's like I had to learn management skills as well. But guess what I started? I started with my own life. And so until I was able to match my own life, then that, that's really, where the uh, foundation in that began because um, it, it really changed me. But I didn't, I didn't get it at first until somebody told me, you know, uh, I think I met um, Doug, um, Derek Dudley, which is the cousin of JD. And, you know, so, so Death had a small label. He say, oh, I manage JD. I said, oh, JD, he's the manager. He don't need no manager. He, you know, he always had, was hands on with his talent. I said, he is the manager. He said, no, no, but I manage his life. Like, how, you know, I keep him on track. I, he got goals. He got personal aspirations. I keep him on track. And then it clicked. It registered for me. Like, wow, we all need time management. We all need yeah. it. And, and so that that really when I began to apply it and like that vision board and writing it down, I had the vision board and to, the to-do list. And I, I can remember when I moved one time and I unpacked the boxes and I found the old to-do list. And I was like, I accomplished everything that was on that list. I'm telling you, it was, whew. And that's a huge part of my healing. I'm in counseling. I go to the Nest Counseling Center. It's a rabbi who counts. And this rabbi is street. Like, yeah. I know we have all the stuff with Nick Cannon and the rabbi stuff going on, but my business, he showed me it's all kind of Yeah. And this dude really helps me. I'm getting a lot of this understanding and clarity and this you know, the victim stuff that I used to have, I'm not having it no more. And, and yeah, I have a lady in my life actually who actually taught me this vision board stuff. Yes. So copy off of her. And it's, it's, it helps you take the stuff out of your mind. Yeah. Put it somewhere where it can make That's where a lot of my anxiety was for the past four years. Oh, this more six. Past six mm -hmm. years, King Solomon. So past six years, I've been just all over. You know, and so, I'm finally right. Man, that's wonderful. I'm we so so excited for you, and I know it's going to be just continual success as you be organized and you begin to achieve one goal at a time. You're definitely going to get back, and that brings us to the next question as far as your new music. We hear you release a, a new song. Um, tell us about that journey. Tell us about how that came to um, happen. Like, what made you know it's time? Right. Uh, I released the song called Grand. Um, and I was reluctant to release it because I release a lot of new stuff with my two months. But I just wanted some closure to the whole, you know, situation with my child's mother and stuff like that. So I explained kind of when I released it, okay, the song just is about one day I left for church and I came to an empty house. 
my child gone, everything moved out. But the only thing that was left was a grand piano. And so, oh, you know, I didn't make the song then. I was towed up, but I made a song about that. It's the emptiness. And I guess the theme I want people to get from it was not that I got done wrong or anything. What could I do in my next relationship? Where I don't ever have to feel that. I don't ever want to be in with just me and my piano. Like, I, don't, I don't want that feeling. Again. So I make sure I move correctly. You know? Yeah, so because, you know, it's it's really, it when we hate to say it, but that adversity, that hardship, is that's when we make our best stuff. Like when we going through pain and hurt and stuff. And it's like almost like you don't want nobody to go through that, but it's like some of the best music is made in that yeah. regard, you know? So as um, long as you're able to process it correctly and heal correctly, uh, we, you know, uh, what is the alternative? Not live, not take risks, you know? So as long as we grow and become better as a result, you know, I guess it's worth it, right? And a lot of people in this industry, we do take that other route that you said. People have killed themselves. Yeah. You know, I remember I talk with Tyrese, he was like, Kevin, the reason you're going crazy right now is because you built this whole reality full of props and, and stuff that for the world. Like you're on the stage and you build up this whole world for the world to see. You fell apart, you, you couldn't handle it because you saw the real world. You had cognitive dissonance. Tyrese is deep. And uh, I couldn't handle it at the time. I was like, well, I thought I was. I thought my success made me above the, you know, I really thought I was a star. You know, you got to remember, you still have urges. You still have to eat, go to the restroom. So you're human. People get lose touch of that. They, they want to do it. Yeah. So let's let's talk about it. You know, because um, and, and see, well, how, how much of a grip or how do you have on it? Let's talk about dealing with stardom. Like you have recognition. People know who you are. You still have to live your life. Uh, people think that um, because you are famous, you don't have a real life. You don't deal with real issues. Like, what is that transition like dealing with that? What has that been like dealing uh, with the start? Like, where you are now with it? You have a, um, a good process of it? Personally, um, because first I would like to give advice to upcoming artists. It's just that if you're going to listen to the negative. I mean, the good, you're going to have to listen to the So they should listen to either maintain you know your sanity obviously and when the world started thinking i'm crazy trust trust my spirit for a long time um, and i started realizing i read books i read a book called um the way of the superior man that the world society like the public it's kind of like a woman it's like being in a relationship with a woman and the woman will always test you you know, and do things to make sure you really love it. And that's never stop. You always have to prove. And if it's ever one situation where you do the wrong thing, your woman is like, see, you don't really love me. And I was just testing you. So I, I've done a lot of things to make the world kind of not trust me, but I'm showing them like, it wasn't on purpose. You know, one of the reasons was just not having an understanding of what I'm, I'm trying to get. Now that I'm being able to process, or world, or, or trust with the world. And it matters to me. If it did matter, I'll be, if I said it didn't matter, I'll be lying. I would at least know look, what I'm saying I'm doing and this is what I'm showing. And then you could judge me accordingly. You know? Because I do want to represent something bigger than me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, as long as you uh, know how to deal with the, with the stardom and um, knowing the power behind it and how to use it and how to process um, the recognition and how, how, you know, just how to deal with it. It's, it's a learning process. I don't think nobody knows how to um, deal with it right away. You know what I'm saying? Because some some of your life belongs to you. And although you have to share it with the rest of the world, you have, it, I think it's, it's, it's the artist's prerogative to say, hey, this is a part of my life that I don't want to share. And I, you have that, that right. You know what I'm saying? So um, you have to relieve it um, to speculations. But at the end of the day, either you okay with the speculations or you want to clear them up. But nevertheless, it's, it's your story, your your life, your narrative. You need to always control that. And I think that um, it's important that 
um, it's the artist or the famous person pr um, pr prerogative to share what they're wanting to share. And so how much we pry or what have you, it's, it's, it's their right to do just that, whether we agree with it or not. So, um, you know, I just um, continue to encourage you on your journey of, of dealing with that. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't think nobody really ever gets a handle on it. But it's, um, it's, it's, it's great that you're honest about it and the challenges you have with it, you know. But, you know, I'm sure you are, you'll figure it out. You work with a lot of great people. Yeah. What was it like working with some of the greatest people you work? Carrie Hilson, Chris. Like, what was that like? Like, creating that magic, the, what we call a hit song or just songs that we love, the soundtracks to our lives. Like, what was it like in that creative process working with great people and yourself, of course, adding to that greatness? It's so unrealistic. It seems like a and it just shows you that hard work really pays off. It was those nights where you, you just really believed in yourself and you didn't know why people doubted you. And you have that moment when you're sitting in the studio and Tyrese, you're doing a song with Tyrese, or you, you're sitting and dreaming, giving you advice about how to sell more songs. You're doing a song for Rihanna. Yeah. You have to take time and, and, and really sit back and. Go through the bar, sit with the bars. You have to sit back and see what you was really learning in the moments. Like I had a lot of moments I forgot about with Nick Russell. And um, when I got the chance to sit back after his passing, I remember when he called me into the office and he said, look, hey, man, a lot of dudes in these rooms I be in, they want to see you fail and they want to laugh at it. But I don't think it's funny and I don't want to see you fail. They know you're going to succeed with or without them, but they rather just see you. You're gonna figure it out. I wanna see him figure it out. And that's something I took with him. He's like, don't give him stuff to, to laugh at you about. Don't give him stuff to write more rumors about. Don't give him don't give him that. So yeah. shout out to Nipsey. Yeah, oh man, that, that's awesome. Like that that people don't understand how much culture we have here in LA. Like Nip and I like the fact that Nip was so accessible. Like he stayed, you know, right there. He was accessible. You could he was in the shop or whatever. He, that type of greatness is around where it, it really helped give an impartation to change people's lives. And so who was someone else that really gave you great advice in the industry besides Nipsey? Who gave you some good advice to still hold on to? Who else gave me some good advice? Uh, Brandy told me my life ends. Brandy came and talked to me in a point in my life losing it. I wasn't into the mental health. I didn't want to hear that. I think she even tried to say, Kevin, I think you have personality drug conversation over. But I don't. Yeah. But just her ability to see that we're laughing at me because I'm sitting out in downtown, I'm singing to the homeless, I'm doing stuff like that. And there's people making negative comments about it. For some reason, they relate to that. You're trying to be a good spirit and people have mean, nasty stuff say about it she's just like i see your spirit i want to pour and i wow. thank her for that because she was always somebody i really looked up uh, no, she's amazing. Yeah. i remember being 10 years old not liking how i look because all the life but who would talk about me about being dark and having big lips they call me bubble gump from uh mm -hmm. forrest gump was a popular movie at the time mm. so i hated being black i hated my lips my eyes hated everything about me and uh, I just remember watching her video. And she had dark skinned dudes in her video, and I used to pretend like she was singing. <laughs> she was singing best friend and all that. It was really a moment for me. Yeah. Always be your best friend. So then when she's reaching out in times where I want to kill myself mm. because society lied on me and said I'm beating a woman I never beat mm. and justifying me not seeing my kid because they believe I'm a woman beater. She came in that time. Mm. And I was able to heal. That was 20, I want to say 2017. Yeah. Um, no, she, she's a she's an amazing artist. I met her. I interviewed her. Um, she's an amazing spirit, amazing artist, beautiful, um, just natural beauty. And it's just um, amazing. And that's what this show is about. And thank you guys for tuning in for another interview with Hollywood. Now, where we just talk one on one with Hollywood star power, insights, and influencers, we have a wonderful new guest.
today. Kevin McCall is here with us today, sharing his life with us. And just please comment, share, like, subscribe if you have not already. Getting some great, great information and uh, just getting a little bit more to know who Kevin McCall really is, the producer, the artist, the songwriter, just really his contribution in the industry, you know, as young as you are, it's really, it's phenomenal. And um, I'm just glad that you're here with us on this platform because like you said, um, the media, sometimes it's not nice. That's why I know I'm very conscious about what I want to put out and uh, what I want to be a part of because it's so important. And uh, in regards to black media and black press, we're demonized. And um, it's unfortunate, even with a lot of black artists that do not want to do black press, in, in addition to mainstream um, locking us out as well. But it's important that we have uh, an integrity to media that brings uh, um, the platform to everyone. I think everyone has a right to share, like I say, that their platform and also have the prerogative to share with the uh, public what they choose to share, you know, and that nobody is perfect and that we all are figuring it out. And even if you have the best upbringing possible, things still can happen. That's just, that's life, you know? And so- and I, always, I always love dunking at a day and stuff like that. People might yeah. call it wrong. <laughs> Charlamagne, it's like dunking at a day. <laughs> you don't want them clowning you, don't give them stuff to work with. Don't give them stuff to work with. But you know, I think we, we all love a good um, triumphant story, a good perseverance story, a good underdog story. And it's really all about how you bounce back. That's why I'm so excited to, that you release new music and that you back out there because, you know, uh, we all have those hiccups or whatever, but it's how you come back. It's how you persevere, you know what I'm saying? And so we just know that that's what we're waiting on. I think the world is ready to hear uh, I think everybody been in their lab cooking up under this COVID, but I'm t I'm telling you, I know once things get back up and going, the music that's gonna be put out, boy, I'm trying to tell you, I bet I know it's gonna be off the chain. I know it I'm is. Up when I'm deuces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going so much. I'm living at my grandma's house. Yeah. My mom at the time, she left left me, and her uh, father was like, You're "Never gonna make it." I had a friend that was in the Temptations. He broke. <laughs> Be like that. You're never gonna make it. I'm like, man, bro, I'm a, it's always that I have to prove people wrong. Yeah, that thing yeah. that instilled in me when you know I'm not gonna start you to the second half of the game. Yeah. You do. Yeah. And still end up getting the, uh, the, the same yards as people who've been in the game the whole time. So that's that's what it is. You got you have a, a small amount of time to make a great impact, and you're like, oh, I could I could do it in 60 seconds. You know, and that's what. That's where that greatness come from. Whenever I'm I'm doing anything as far as entertainment oriented, and I'm at you know some of the some of the some I can't even describe some of the events that I attend, and I had to think of a word. I'm like, what is the word about to put it into words? This is so out of body, so surreal. I say greatness. This is I, I was surrounded by so much greatness, and people who just all odds against them, but they still managed to get it done, and that's what it felt like. You know, that was like, oh man, I'm wrong. Sydney Poitier, all the people in one room, like, oh my God, this is crazy, you know? And it was his greatness. It's, and it's, that's that's what's in you, and that's what you have to continue to move forward in. And all that adversity, that's what it squeezed out, that that greatness that's inside of you, you know? And so, that's but yeah, so what is some of the misconceptions that you want to clear up as we conclude? Like, what would you want the audience to know that they might not know that we haven't covered? And like, what are some of the misconceptions? Uh, I'm not, I'm not violent. I mean, I'm really just a big kid. I'm, I'm so lucky. I'm nice. You know, and another step that I, I, um, what's the word? It's such a weird word. I don't even know the word. What's it when you don't want your kid no more? Uh, a bet. Uh, what's the word when you say, I don't want my kid no more? Not abandonment. What, 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 you don't want him no more. I, was, I mean, uh, it's I mean, a court term for it. Like disown, disown. I disown. They said I disown my child. It's not true. And to clarify, because some people have to even bring up, bring up the picture. This picture of me going on a little rant, a little stream of consciousness, as I call it. You know, a lot of times when Kanye gets to rant, yeah, yeah, yeah. just a stream of consciousness. And you got to, if you on a level enough to pick through it, you can. But he says stuff crazy. But anyway. Um, where was I at? I got lost. The misconceptions. You want to clear up any misconceptions? You missed one about uh, yeah. Just that I call my daughter because what I was saying in the text. Um, 
Wendy Williams. She says, you can have her. I don't want to deal with her. Yada, yada, yada. A lot of people, men and women do this. Men and women. And when a man do it, that's the worst. But what they do is they take a child if you leave them, and it's called parental. And they'll try to stop you from seeing the child unless you do what they want. Yeah. Now, that's what happened in my case. You know, so I was just saying, I'm not. If I don't play into it, then you won't really have a hand to play. Oh, yeah. I was saying. But they flipped it and said, like, I was saying, oh, I don't want to fight. And if that was the case, I wouldn't end up going to court for it. I wouldn't be talking about it right now. Yeah. Yeah. For them to say that, I feel like it's wrong for people to put that. And you might tell her that as a child. You just own yeah. Well, you'll be doing the devil's work because I just told you I did it. So, yeah. They heard it. Yeah. The love, I think love covers a multitude. I think that uh, one thing about dealing with children, um, they they very smart. They're little people. And I think um, they sense genuineness, you know, more than we do. And I think the only thing you can do is what comes from the heart reaches the heart and that you can just be uh, true and you can be genuine and you can you can love for real. And that's one of the things that never goes away. Like you, when you talk about your childhood with your father and what he imparted in you and your mom, you remember the good. You know what I'm saying? Take the meat and leave the bones. You remember that good that stuck with you. And that what's matter. That transcend everything else because you will make a lot uh, someone who pretend to be a lot uh, the truth a liar with that because it's like well you saying all these bad things but all i ex ever experienced was good you know what i'm saying so we right. only overcome evil with good so if you continue to be true blue and just love for real because th that's your blood and that's just what it is and that's going to transcend everything else so we we really um know and hope that it work it's all going to work out and although we hear a lot of the salacious gossips that you know we all going through uh, what we going through? Cause look at Wendy Williams, for example. She, you know, that's what she do. She doing her job. But when her life came apart, you know, so it happens to everybody, you know. And we don't sure. wish nothing bad on nobody. I'm just saying that's sure. life is going to happen. It's sometimes you cannot prevent it, you can't escape it. But I'm saying is that it happens to everybody. So for you to take it personal, it's like why if you not? It's un it's unescapable. You can't get around it. It's it's life. If you're living life, it's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So um, don't don't let it. Um, affect you so much that it changes or alters who you, the core of who you are. You know what I'm saying? And you got to be true to who you are and everything's going to come uh, full circle. So we uh, thank you for sharing that and thank you for clearing that up. And uh, again, you, you guys are watching Hollywood now. One-on-one uh, -on -one interviews with Hollywood star power and insights and influencers. We have a wonderful guest, Kevin McCall, producer, writer, um, just greatness right here. And he could come and share a part of his life, come and share his truth. Uh, he controlled the narrative. He told you what it was, and uh, we gonna back him up. We gonna support him. You know, King Time Entertainment. That's what we do. And uh, anything else in closing? As we close, we thank you so much for doing this platform. If you have not subscribed, share, comment, please do that at this time. Share, share, share this video. As we continue to bring you more great interviews with wonderful, great star power, Kevin. Please end it. Whatever you want to say, and give them your social media how they can help. And uh, please. It was just an honor. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. A huge weight off my shoulders because I've all, you know, the communication is what's most important for me. Not only being an artist, but being an influencer. I, if you call me that, I have to accept that. Uh, so that y'all care what I have to say, yeah. what I do. I thank y'all because y'all give me purpose. That's and it. a purpose here to be a servant, you know, a king. That's and it. So uh, I got it. some to another misconception people have is that my mother get along and my mother are best friends. Mm -hmm. We went on Ayana Fix it's My Life. Not, yeah. Then reality TV works. So a lot of that stuff scripted and didn't really represent how we really get gotcha. me and my type. You know, I'm tired yeah. of my dad. You know, That's so it. uh she was living in a, having a bad living situation because my dad left her and married and started a new family and stuff. So my mom was left to figure it out. And her being a resilient woman, she, she stuck in it by my That's side. That's it. And I was able to help her get the house. See? That's it. So she's getting in the house. That's, that's good news. 
Yeah, when when you when when um when your path is being the matriarch or the patriarch of the family, then the pillar of the family to stand as much as given, much as required, that is just expected. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, how I deal with it in my own family, I never make it about the relationships with my family members. I make it about God because that was a truth that was bestowed on me by God. So I always work it out with him. You know what I'm saying? So it's like whenever it's directed towards me, I always direct it back towards him. It's like you give me the wisdom to how to deal with this because nobody gonna tell me what to do, how to do, when to do it, except for me. So it's like, you know, it's one thing to be because to me, I feel like my position is you a non-giver could never tell a giver nothing. You know what I'm saying? If I'm giving, you can't tell me when, why, or how. Excuse me? Yeah, like, I you know, you. Yeah, I, I just don't understand that concept. But if that's what the God wants us to do, because that's how your blessing comes, then give me the wisdom to know how to navigate through that. But at the end of the day, that's what he done. Because other than that, me feeling one-on-one with someone is saying the narrative as you could be given more than what you already is when I'm given a lot. You know what I'm saying? So I, I need to help with that part. You know what I'm saying? So he helped me with that part. We good. We move forward. And so that's what it's about. Mend the relationships, man. And that's what that's that's your strength. And so every relationship that's broken, he's gonna help you to mend it. You're gonna move forward, and hey, everything gonna be great. You know that's what it's about. Rel building relationships, making them stronger. And hey, the the ones that's worth keeping, keep them. The ones that's not, hey, you know you'll be you'll be okay. You you'll make up for them. So um, thank you again, brother. Wonderful interview. Great talking with you. Uh, we expect nothing but more great music from you and great artistry. As you continue to uh, release it and give it to us, and uh, is, is a gospel project? I see people gospel too all the time. Is there a gospel song coming up in there somewhere? I'm starting a gospel choir. Okay. Well, okay. This is this is a street choir, and I want you to go. I want you to come to the bar. We're gonna sing songs that y'all know. You know. That's it. That's it. Represent something big. So. That's it. Thank you so much, guys. Again, subscribe, share this comment, share this uh, video. Kevin McCall, thank you so much, brother. Have a wonderful rest of your day, brother. See you next time. You sure come back anytime you want to, brother, and just continue to do what you do. Thank you so much for your contributions. Talk to you soon, okay? All right. Like, Hollywood now, y'all. King Solomon. All right. Kingdom music. That's it. Kingdom music. <laughs>